Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. You know, I've said in prior videos that what sets zero-aggression principle-style libertarians such as myself, and particularly the anarcho-capitalist variety, is a topic for a whole other video. And while I did talk about this in my series on abortion, when I was applying the zero-aggression principle to abortion, I left a lot of things out on purpose because I couldn't get into everything in that one video. So as a result, well, the video that I talked about being a completely different video is this video. <laughs> now the zero aggression principle states, no human being has the right under any circumstances to initiate force against another human being, nor to threaten or delegate its initiation. Now you have to note that the zero aggression principle does not define force as unethical. It defines the initiation of force as unethical. It is, for example, unethical for a mugger to pull a gun on someone and force someone to give up their money. However, it is entirely ethical for the victim to draw their firearm and kill the mugger. It is also unethical for a mugger to even threaten a victim in any way, even if it's just with their fists. However, it is still completely ethical for the victim to draw a firearm and kill them. Instituted, initiated force may be stopped in any way necessary by any means, even if it turns out, and frankly often if it turns out, that the victim was better armed than the mugger. The zero aggression principle applies at all levels, not just the personal. It states that one cannot delegate the initiation of force. And that is what defines zero aggression principle style libertarians and particularly anarcho-capitalists such as myself from everyone else. It, it also distinguishes us from the libertarian party in the United States, which does not represent our views. And this is because the zero aggression principle also applies to government. Because government initiates force. In fact, government is the consequence of a group of people delegating the initiation of force to other people. The most obvious example of government initiation of force is taxation. And libertarians are generally fond of saying taxation is theft because it is. Government obtains tax money through the initiation of force. No one pays taxes willingly because if we did, we'd probably never pay them. Now follow this chain with me. If you fail to pay your taxes, then people in suits will demand that you pay your taxes. If you continue to not pay taxes, men with guns will show up and demand that you pay taxes. If you continue to not pay taxes, those men with guns will take you to jail. And if you still continue not to pay and resist those men with guns, they will kill you. Compare this just to a mafia protection racket. It is exactly the same. The only difference is that it is government doing it. Government must always use the threat of death whenever it passes any law of any kind, no matter how innocuous. The ultimate threat behind any government action is death. Zero aggression principle libertarians like myself do not make exceptions for government. And this is why, as a zero aggression principle libertarian and an anarcho-capitalist, I see no reason that government should be involved in anything, ever. Government is the consequence of a group of people delegating initiation of force to other people. And this is why government as a concept violates the zero aggression principle and is always unethical. This is also why those who delegate the initiation of force to government are also in violation of the zero aggression principle and are also unethical. Remember, when you beg a government to become involved in anything, in any way, you are in violation of the zero aggression principle. And also remember, at a very basic level, when you beg government to make decisions for somebody else, you automatically are telling them to make the decision for you, and it will ultimately backfire on you 
Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Note that the zero aggression principle only applies to human beings, as only human beings can achieve sapience, as I discussed in that part of my series on abortion, sentience and sapience. The zero aggression principle cannot apply to animals such as dogs, cats, pets, or livestock, because those animals, being non-sapient, they can't even conceive of the concept of initiated force. You know, if you really want to boil it down, most simply what the zero aggression principle means is, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. <laughs> Now, people naturally tend to say to me, hey, wait a minute. It seems like you're advocating for no government at all. That is anarchy. And to this I say, yes, you're absolutely right. People then are naturally shocked because they have been propagandized since birth that government is an absolute necessity and they cannot imagine a world without it. So I'm going to ask you to stretch your imagination and come with me for a little trip into what libertarians tend to call libertopia. Imagine for a moment that the people of a geographic area called libertopia, they decide that they are going to abide by the zero aggression principle. And in libertopia, an individual is free to take any action that they like provided that they do not initiate force against another human being in the process. There are no limits on an action, an individual's actions, provided that they don't initiate force against another human being. In, libertari in Libertopia, there is no government. There are no laws. There is no government-sponsored police, fire protection, sewage, roads, or any other government service. These are all supplied by private businesses, each competing for your money, meaning that the cost of those services will decrease as the quality increases, which is always the case in the free market. In Libertopia, one can go armed with any type of weapon they see fit, whether it be a revolver, a semi-automatic pistol, a sawed-off shotgun, a fully automatic rifle, a Thompson submachine gun, a gyro jet, a laser, or a plasma weapon. This alone, the ability of anyone to carry anything that they need for their own personal protection, will bring a near halt to initiated force. And this is because those who would initiate force, such as thieves, rapists, murderers, and the like, will likely not even attempt their initiation of force, because there is every likelihood that they will be killed in the process. And frankly, good riddance to them. You see, a 110-pound woman can be equalized to a 250-pound rapist by the simple addition of a couple of pounds of lead and steel on her person. Those remaining psychotic few who will attempt initiated force will probably be killed in the process, and good riddance to them. But what of that vanishingly small number of people who successfully initiate force and leave a victim behind? Well then, anyone interested, be it the victim's uh, family, the, for friends, or any interested individual, potentially even private charities, they may hire a private security company or a private investigator to discover who committed the crime. But then what? Without government to try and imprison them, how will they face justice? Generally speaking, through one of two ways. First is through the application of shunning. That is, the person's name is widely circulated in these days around the world, which is easily accomplished, and people would simply refuse to do business with them. No one will rent them an apartment, sell them groceries, sell them ammunition, or sell them weapons. In short order, these people are going to be starving on the street, and good riddance to them. The other way is through duels. The victim's relatives or friends may challenge a perpetrator to a duel, and no doubt one of them will be a better shot than the perp, and good riddance to him.
Now, one of those really wealthy family places that creates a very significant temptation to force initiators. How will they function without police and government sanctioned police departments? Well, pretty much the way they do now. They hire private security firms to protect their property. It's really no different in that respect. In Libertopia, there are no government sponsored fire departments. In Libertopia, there are insurance companies, and they would hire private firefighting companies that compete with each other. Hence, the quality will go up and the price will go down, and they will be employed by the insurance companies to protect the homes of those it insures. Only makes sense if you're insuring something, you want to make sure that nothing happens to it. And what of corporations? Corporations and their obvious abuses in modern times. Corporations are a legal fiction created by government, specifically intended to shield those who make decisions from the consequences of their actions. In Libertopia, every business is owned and operated by someone or a group of people. And these people are directly responsible for the actions of that company. Currently, government shields those who are responsible by placing them behind a wall of a fictional entity called a corporation and thereby holding the fictional entity accountable, which means that the ultimate decision makers will face no consequences for their actions. Now, let me give you an example from my own experience. For several years, I lived in the Sioux City, Iowa area, and it was home to a large meat processing facility. The, pro the processing facility produced a rather fantastic stench. It went through the, out the entire city, and indeed Sioux City was often called a sewer city for three states around because of that smell. It was so well known. But because it was a corporation, there was absolutely nothing that anyone could do. In Libertopia, those responsible for allowing that smell to leave the land which they owned would be held directly responsible by any landowner, and that would mean the entire city in that case. And they'd be held responsible that the, if that the smell affected the entire city. Every single property owner in the entire city would be able to take action against the processing plants, such as the one I've just described. And they can institute mechanisms until that plant institutes mechanisms that traps the smell onto their own property. Neighboring property owners could take action in manner I've outlined, either by shunning the meat processing plant's owners and allowing them to starve on the street and good riddance to them, or by challenging them to a duel, all approximately 100,000 people in Sioux City, which means that sooner or later, the owner would be dead and more power to him. The mere fact that death would be a likely outcome of failing to contain this smell would motivate property owners to not allow it to leave their property in the first place. In Libertopia, one could apply the exact same tactics to any business if you dump sewage into the drinking water, if you dump toxic waste into the ground, you can do the exact same thing. Once you strip this fictional corporation away and make the decision makers absolutely responsible for what they have done, well, individuals can take action that will cause them to either die or more likely make certain that force isn't initiated in the first place. Now, as one can see in Libertopia, not only are individuals free to take any action that does not violate the, the zero aggression principle, that does not initiate force, they're also free to take actions that allow them to halt initiated force. And this works not just at the individual level, but at the group level. Now, the question often becomes, how, how are people going to pay for this without paying a government to do it for them? Well, consider this. By most estimates, without government taxing every single good or service that you buy or use at every single possible point of production, the cost for any good or service on our shelves today would be about one-eighth 
of its current cost. There would be no income tax, no property tax, no sales tax, no death tax, no inheritance tax, nothing at any level. And that means that all this money would stay in your pocket to be used as you saw fit, to purchase insurance that fits your needs or any other good or service that you needed. Medical care, for example, which is presently a crisis due to a century's worth of government meddling. And for this, I point you straight to my video, The Problem with U.S. Medical Care, Government, link below. This would become affordable and comprehensive again, as it was as late as the 1950s. Again, I suggest you look at that video, or you can just go watch the wonderful Dragnet episode, The Big Thief, which is based around how doctors operated in 1953. Link to that also below. People would be able, as they previously did before government screwed it all up, they would be able to pay out of pocket for almost any illness or disease. And drugs, drugs would drop like a rock in prices because without our currently draconian patent laws that do not do what they were intended to do at all, there would be competition, which would drive the cost of the drugs down while increasing their quality, as always happens in a free market. Doctors would once again come to people's homes, making house calls as they did as late as the 1970s, inside of my lifetime, rather than forcing patients to go to their office or go visit a hospital. In Libertopia, all your money is your money to use any way that you see fit. You can start your own business with Basically, no barrier to entry because you haven't got government making rules, laws, and regulations that make it impossible for anyone but the big players to start up in the first place. You can even do businesses that are currently considered illegal, such as being a merchant who sells drugs. And you can do this provided that you do not initiate force in the process. And by the way, selling drugs does not initiate force. If you sell me marijuana, or if I sell you marijuana, we're doing it totally voluntarily. We are not initiating force. The fact that I happen to be sticking something in my body, or you happen to stick something in your body that may not be good for you, that's your own lookout. That's not initiating force against another person. You can also hire as many people as necessary in your business at a wage that is both acceptable to both parties Again, without being hamstrung by endless government law and regulation. And again, provided that you don't initiate force in the process. Now, the result of this absolute freedom would be an instantaneous rise in the standard of living for everyone. And probably meaning that people would need to work far fewer hours in order to make ends meet and to save money. It would also result in an instantaneous economic and probably unending economic boon. It would create an instantaneous advance in science in which competition would create better quality while at the same time lowering price, as the free market has always done. Now, finally, there's an issue of money, because in Libertopia, there is no government-backed currency. In Libertopia, there are almost certainly going to be precious metals used for mediums of exchange, such as gold, silver, platinum, and others. And they could be held on one's person in small amounts for daily purchases, or stored in a bank vault with notes issued against it by the bank, or notes issued in the form of debit or credit cards, eh, probably not credit cards, but debit cards, that were issued by the bank more or less as they are today. There might also be cryptocurrencies or even other means of exchange that I can't even think of. The most important thing about Libertopia is that being free, you are free to let your imagination run wild. You are free to try any solution to any problem for a profit, provided that you don't initiate force against another human being in the process. This means that everything that I've just mentioned are just the things that I can think of. No doubt, with active imaginations of millions or even billions of people, this will produce even better and even cheaper and even more competitive solutions than my limited imagination can allow for.
Now I ask you, isn't a world in which you are free, truly free, to do what you want, isn't that a world that you'd like to live in? Because I know that I would. And that's all I have to say about that. Now, as a result of making this video, I've decided I'm going to host a live stream as a Q&A regarding the Zero Aggression Principle. It is a scheduled live event, and there is a link to it below. Please click on it and go and click the little button that says Reminder. That will let you know when it's coming up with about 10 minutes to spare. And it will be held this Thursday, June 6, 2019, at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific. And if you're working off of UTC, that will be 2 a.m. Monday morning. So be sure to drop in, because you can ask me any question about any aspect of the Zero Aggression Principle, how I think it would apply in a given situation, how I think Libertopia might work. And I will do my very best to give an honest opinion about it. You can also feel free to try to punch holes in my ideas. Although I have to tell you in advance, people have been trying to do that for about 20 years, and I have good answers for almost anything. But you may certainly feel free to try to punch holes in me if you can. So, thanks for watching. I would love to keep this conversation going, so please feel free to leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I will do my best to respond to you. If you like what I'm doing, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all of these in my description box below. So. Do tune in for my Zero Aggression Principle live stream this Thursday at Ju June 6th, 2019 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific, and if you're working off of UTC, that's 2 a.m. Monday morning. And remember to bring all your questions, comments, and nasty remarks. And that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.